Now let's get into writing the abstract. The abstract is a really important part of marketing your paper also, just like the title. Because when you go to Google Scholar and you're searching for literature to to read or to cite or to learn some methods from, first you're going to see the title. Then when you click on the title, you're going to see the abstract. You're going to read the abstract. And depending on what you read there, you'll either download the paper and read it, or you'll move on to the next. So the abstract is really important in that way. It's kind of a marketing tool. It gets the readers to continue reading the paper, just like the title got the readers to continue to the abstract. The abstract will get the readers to continue to the introduction and the rest of the paper. So what are the functions of the abstract? We, we talked about that a little bit, but let's take a look at this list. One function is it's going to provide an overview of the paper. Uh, the second function is what we just talked about. It's going to hook the reader. It's going to uh, convince them to go ahead and read the rest of the paper. So it should be interesting and it should be compelling in order to serve that function to attract readers. But on the other hand, it should be complete enough that somebody could cite your paper just from reading the abstract. Don't you want them to read the whole thing? Well, yeah, of course, but maybe you're publishing in a journal that's not open access and some readers cannot access the full paper. All they can access is the title and the abstract. Well, you want them to still cite your paper, so give them enough information that they can do that. Let's look at some tips for writing the abstract. The first tip is before you start, go back and double check the instructions to authors for your target journal. That's going to tell you the format of the abstract and it's going to tell you the word limit of the abstract. So an abstract is short and it, that makes it really hard to write. Tip number two is that you should write the abstract just like you wrote the other sections. In other words, start from a blank screen. Number three goes along with that do not cut and paste sentences from the main text to build up the abstract. A couple reasons for that. When readers see the same sentence twice, they tend to start to tune out. They don't like to see information being repeated word for word. Secondly, it makes the abstract not flow very well if it's made up of sentences that are pulled from the body of the paper because they're just not matching. And to make them match, you have to do a lot of editing. And so that really is probably going to take more time than if you just wrote the abstract from a blank page. Now, I mentioned before that you should look back at the instructions for your target journal to see the format and word limits of abstracts. So what are the different types of abstracts that you might write not just when you're writing a scientific paper, but also in other aspects of scientific writing. Now for your papers, you are probably going to write either an informative abstract or a structured abstract. The informative abstract is the type that is a single paragraph, whereas the structured abstracts contain subheadings or bullet points. And so your target journal is going to tell you which of these formats you should use. If you write a review article or a book chapter, you'll write something called an indicative abstract, um, which is a lot like the informative abstract, but it doesn't have all of the same elements since it's not a research study. You'll also, in your career, probably write a conference abstract or a proposal abstract and those are going to have specific instructions for them as well and today we're just going to focus on uh, abstract for your journal article for either of these types of abstracts it's going to contain all of the elements of your journal article in that short abstract so it's a little tricky and challenging to write. So for the informative abstracts, they're going to contain uh, sentences that include the background, the research question or purpose, the experimental approach, the key results, not all of the results, but the key results, the main conclusions that come from those results, and also the significance of the work. So all of these elements are going to be contained in that 200 to 350 word abstract. 
Let's look at a template for the informative abstract based on the nature abstract. Now these instructions are not specific only to this journal. They're going to work for any journal that uses the informative type of abstract. So you're going to start off with one or two sentences that provide a basic introduction to the field that are comprehensible to a scientist in any discipline. So very broad context setting sentences. Then you'll have two to three sentences of more detailed background, comprehensible to scientists in related disciplines. Then you'll have one sentence clearly stating the general problem being addressed by this particular study, and one sentence summarizing the main result with the words here we show or their equivalent. Then you'll have two or three sentences explaining what the main result reveals in direct comparison to what was thought to be the case previously, or how the main result adds to previous knowledge. Then you'll conclude with one or two sentences to put the results into a more general context. So this is a really great template to use. I use it uh, every time I need to write an informative abstract. Now let's look at some instructions for a structured abstract. So th this particular set of instructions is from the journal New Phytologist. So these instructions are specific to this particular journal, but they give you an example of what a structured abstract is going to look like. They call the abstract the summary. So the summary for research papers, which must be usable as a standalone document, must not exceed 200 words. So that's a pretty short one. And should be organized using four bullet points to indicate, one, the research conducted, including the rationale, two methods, three key results, and four the main conclusion including key points of discussion. It should not contain citations of other papers. So within these four bullet points you're going to have all of the elements that you had in the paragraph type of abstract and all the elements that are in the main paper and you're going to compress those into these four bullet points. So in the first bullet point, you're going to have the background, the knowledge gap, and the research question. In the second bullet point, you'll have the approach. The third bullet point will reflect the results. And then the fourth bullet point will reflect the discussion section of the paper. Let's look at one more example of a structured abstract. This is from the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA. So this one allows 350 words and it asks you to use subheadings. So the new phytologist asked for bullet points. This one's going to ask for subheadings and those would be importance, objective, design, setting, uh, which will all be combined under one uh, subheading if the paper is accepted. It also has participants, interventions for clinical trials or exposure for observational studies. Then it has the main outcomes and measures. Then it has the results and it has the conclusions and relevance. Let's take a look at some of the common problems of the abstract. One is that there are missing elements. So make sure you have all of those required elements, you know, the background, the knowledge gap, the research question or purpose, uh, the approach, the results, the conclusions, and the significance. It's a lot to fit into a small space of an abstract. Or you might have those elements there, but they're not signposted clearly, and so that makes them obscured. That's a second common mistake. And a third one is over the word limits. Now, you're not going to be able to submit your paper to the journal until you have the abstract under the word limit. Because with the electronic submission portals that they have nowadays, you know, it's just not going to accept the abstract if it's over the limit. So make sure that you spend time to get it into the word limit before you go into the submission process. We're ready for the action list for this week. What I want you to do first is to brainstorm. And I want you to sit down at your computer or with a pencil and paper and just write out different versions of titles. So write five or six or even more if you want to. Different possibilities for titles. So play around with the, the different title types. Uh, declarative titles, descriptive titles, question titles, compound titles. You know, Just write a whole bunch of different versions and variations and then choose the one that you think is the best. Next on the action list 
is I want you to write the abstract and start with a blank page or a blank screen and write it from start to finish. You can look back at your main paper to remind yourself of how you're structuring everything, but don't cut and paste from the main paper. You know, write it from scratch. Depending on your target journal and which type of abstract you'll need to submit, follow some of the templates that we've looked at for informative or structured abstracts. And make sure that the abstract includes all of the key elements, the background, the research question or purpose, the approach, the key results, the conclusions, and the significance. As we wrap up this lesson, let's just look back and review the learning outcomes. You know, when you're done with this lesson, you will be able to explain the purpose of a title. You'll be able to describe and identify the types of titles. You will be able to write a complete, concise, specific title. You'll be able to explain the purpose of an abstract. You'll be able to describe all the key elements of the abstract. And you'll be able to write an abstract that contains all of the elements and conforms to the journal requirements, all while avoiding the common problems of the title and abstract. All right, that concludes this lesson on the title and abstract. Now, don't be fooled. Just because these are short parts of the paper doesn't mean that they're easy parts of the paper. Put a lot of thought and effort into writing the title. Put a lot of thought and effort into writing the abstract. Your first attempt at the abstract is probably going to be too long, and that's okay. You'll revise it. You'll edit it until you get it into the the word length. So go ahead and get started on this week's action list and happy writing.